In this video, we're going to talk about how to do forms with Express. The first thing we need to do to get started is to have an entry point to our app. So what we'll do is touch app.js. We'll also need to render views. So we're going to need a views directory, which will hold our pug templates. And then we'll also need to npm init. Um, all of the defaults for npm init are totally fine in this case. So I'm just going to tap enter through all these and then hit yes at the end. After that, I can install our package dependencies. So we're going to need express, body parser, and pug. Um, so I'm npm installing these. Note that you don't need to do the dash dash save flag because npm 5 and up automatically do that. And what that means is the package.json automatically has the dependencies added to it when you install in the same directory, which is really helpful. Cool. Um, so now I can actually open our project in the text editor. In the app.js file, um, I'm going to start by getting our dependencies. So I'm going to require express and body parser, which is camel case now because it's JavaScript. And then I'm going to initialize express by um, calling express as a function. Basically, this is a constructor function. You can see that it, it is a top level function exported by the express module. Yeah, it's the it's the default export when you get um, required express, basically. And once we have our app, uh, this is what we can call methods on to do our routing middleware and server stuff. So I'm going to leave some space for middlewares middleware slash routing. And then I'm going to just call app.listen. And what app.listen does is actually creates the server for us. So we just have to give it a port number, which uh, usually you can just do 3000. And then a callback function, which will run once the port has been allocated and the server's up. So I'm just going to say, my server is running on port 3000. And these uh, less than 10 lines of code here is enough to actually get your server running. So let's just go back to the terminal. And we can either do node app.js, where you get my server is running on port 3000, or uh, my preference, we can do nodemon or nodemon, depending on how you pronounce it, app.js. And nodemon can basically watch to restart at any time you hit save on the file. So because this console log went up and we're not getting any errors, we know that our server is running. Um, if you also want to check the browser, you can go to localhost 3000. And you'll get Express's default 404 handler, which is cannot get slash. Very interesting, right? So let's actually make this do something. Um, but first, I think it'll probably be best to just define our templates because they're going to be super simple. Might as well get that out of the way. So our initial template is going to be a base HTML boilerplate template that we can extend basically for the other ones. So I'm going to have doc type HTML here, and then some pug syntax for boilerplating the rest of our HTML. Char set title can just be document. The body will have a block content. Cool. And then everything that gets extended on this will extend the body block content, basically. 
Um, so in this video, we're going to demonstrate two different kinds of forms. We're going to do a form that submits via a GET request and a form that submits via a POST request. We can do the um, GET request first. So form with GET is what we'll call the template. And at the top here, we'll extend base.pug. And then we'll define a block content with a form in it. And then this action attribute, um, this is actually going to be submit form with get. This is going to be mapping to a route in Express. So when you click submit on this form, it's going to try to send the data to slash submit form with get. But before you do that, we actually need stuff to submit first. So let's put a couple of text inputs, basically. I'll give this a name of first. I'll call this one last. And then we'll have a submit button at the end here. So these can be anything you want. Uh, I was just thinking first and last name kind of thing. but. This is just a real bare bones form so that we can uh, start talking about the different ways to submit forms. Um, we'll actually copy most of this into our form with get up or form with post up plug rather. We only have to change one thing, which is add an attribute here that says method equals post. Because you guessed it, the default method here is method equals get. We'll also want the route to go to submit form with post instead of submit form with get. Cool. So our templates should be all set right now. And basically, we need app code to render these templates and do something with them once they get submitted. So. Let's go back to our app.js. And we can do app.set, which will be essentially um, setting a value for the express settings. And in this case, we just want to tell it that the view engine is going to be pug. Um, after that, we can do some middleware. So we're going to use body parser dot URL encoded. And then we'll pass the extended option to be true. So without getting too much into what this means, um, this is pretty standard express boilerplate everywhere. Um, we just want to make sure that when we put weird characters in our forms, like question marks, ampersand, plus, um, that these things get encoded properly. There's a thing called percent encoding <clears throat> because there are certain reserved characters like those that I mentioned. Because we'll, as we'll see in a bit, those characters are actually giving instructions and they're not designed to be rendered directly. So they have to be encoded as some kind of percentage. Anyway, that's probably too much information about what that middleware does, but um, there you go. <laughs> now uh, we can actually do the in interesting part of our app by defining the routes. So I'm going to have a app.get to slash form with get, which will take a function. This is standard express handler boilerplate, this callback right here. So um, at slash form.get, I'm going to return response.render and then the name of the template, which is form with get. So what this means is when I go to slash form with get, it renders form with get, which it finds in the views directory. So we can actually test this in our browser. If I go to slash form with get, I get a form. Um, so 
I can't actually do anything with the form because the submit handler, the submit route slash handler is not defined yet. So I get the 404. But we'll come back to that. Um, one thing before I forget that I'd like to do is to redirect from the base route, which is slash. We get another handler here. Um, I would like to redirect to the form with get. So I'm just going to type in slash form with get. That means if you go to the home page, you can get redirected to the right form. Um, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this because you can tell most of it is boilerplate. Um, I'm going to do an, another app.get to form with post that renders the form with post this time. If you're wondering why it's a get that goes to the post, it's because the get request is to actually render the form itself. The post request is what we're gonna be submitting with the form. And we will define a, a post handler in a bit. Well, let's do the get handler first. So app.get, so this will be the result of submitting the form with get, which goes to slash submit form with get. Therefore, I need to do submit form with get and add a handler. And then I can return um, response.send in this case. And I just want to send out the response.query for the get request. So what does this mean, the, the request.query? Well, it's referring to the query string in the request, which looks like this. Um, say I enter my name into the form. It's going to be interpreted to a query string with first as a key for my name and last as a key and any other attributes in that format. So you notice that there's a question mark, an equal sign, and an ampersand. These are very specific um, commands, basically, to map the form elements into arguments, which is why we have to do the URL encoding that I mentioned earlier. But basically, if I go back to the home page, I can enter my name, and it actually submits the form, just like uh, in a query string, just like I said. So that's cool. But the cool thing about Express is that Express is taking that query string and translate, translating it into a JavaScript object, which is really awesome. Because back in my code, I can do stuff like request.query.first. And if I submit the thing again, then you can see it just rendered my name as text. Because I could use dot notation because it was a JavaScript object. So that's pretty awesome. Um, more awesomeness is that for our post handler, when you submit the form with a post request, you do the same thing, but instead of the query string, a post request will have its form data in the request.body. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to make a request to submit form with post. Sorry, form with post. Here we go. I'm going to post my name. And it looks exactly the same. Uh, I still get a JavaScript object with the keys and the values from the form. So the awesome thing about Express is that no matter how your forms are set up, whether they're using GET requests or POST requests, you get access to um, the form values in native JavaScript as a JavaScript object. Anyway, that's pretty much the extent of what we're going to cover with this video. but. Uh, use your imagination 
and more than that, actually code out some apps using forms and form handlers for Express. <laughs>